Okay, we are live. So, uh, hi there, Elevated Planet community. This is John Drew here. And Jolie Gabrielle. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday as we are working to elevate the planet. And today we have a little bit more Dolores Cannon, and John's going to give us a little bit more about it. John? Thank you, Jola. Yes. So um, we've really had this new earth type of focus and we touched upon this. And one of the, the, the questions that comes around is that, that people really struggle with the idea of how could something like the new earth actually exist? Because here we are on the old 3D earth, as we see, it. I believe it's already up to 4D from what uh, I have seen. But how does this happen? What does it look like? Why? And, and, you know, this idea of an earth split. And it was, and the thing is with Dolores Cannon, yeah, you know, I've, I've followed her work now quite extensively. I think she's, she was a very special person on this planet for a reason. And I mentioned last week also that she was the QHHT. She, she created that, which is quantum healing hypnosis technique, where she puts her clients into a somnambulistic trance, which is the deepest level of trance, which enables people to get past their conscious mind. Because I know what I'm like. If, if somebody tries to hypnotize me, my conscious mind will constantly be in the way. So the somnambulistic trance is the level which totally bypasses it. And you can access a lot of information. And it, you know, started off with past lives and things like that was all she was focused on. She didn't really think that anything beyond that. And then she started getting information through, which was more aligned to what you would say, the metaphysical world, to the afterlife, to so many things really about the universe and then about, you know, the planetary kind of changes that are coming up as well. So all this is within her books. And the one that we focused on last week was a take from book three. And this one is from book three as well. But this is actually a little bit more of a condensed view as to the new earth. How could it possibly exist? How is it going to happen? And this was a question that Dolores Cannon had herself as well. She was unsure about how there would be a dimensional shift, how there would be all these strange things that were going to happen where part of the people were ready for a, for a 5D earth and part, uh, a portion of the population weren't. How, how could that possibly happen? So we thought it was worth exploring that a little bit deeper. So what I did, I went into the audio book and, and took out a section and I've edited it to a minor degree, taken out certain bits to save us some time and give us some talking points around this. And that's where we are now. So without further ado, I am going to switch to that video. At a lecture in Chicago in 2006, I was discussing the evolution of the new Earth. I was describing the vision that any Kirkwood had about the Earth splitting into two Earths, which was described in Book Two. How, as the one divided into two separate Earths, the people on each would not be aware of what was happening on the other. Those who had raised their frequency and vibration would ascend into the new earth as it evolved and lifted into a different dimension, thus becoming invisible to the ones left behind. There have been several things about this concept that bothered me. I always like to have the answers, I guess because of my great curiosity. I have felt there are gaps or holes that needed to be filled pieces that needed to be explained. Someone in the audience asked the question about how this could happen, and those on one earth not be aware of what was happening on the other one. Suddenly I had a revelation. A thought came to me that might be the glimmering of an understandable explanation. It is always wise to trust these flashes of intuition and knowledge, because often they are coming from our guides. In this case, it might have been coming from the same source that gives me all of the information through my clients. I suddenly said, a possible explanation just came to me. Earlier in the lecture, I had talked briefly about the theory of parallel universes and lives that are created by our thoughts and decisions. In Book One, I wrote about a theory I had never heard of and that gave me a headache trying to understand. In brief, it says, any time an individual has to make a decision, they usually have more than one choice. This is what I call coming to a crossroad. 
They have to decide to go one way or another. It could be a decision about marriage, a divorce, a job, anything. They ponder each choice and put a great deal of energy into deciding which path to take. Then they make a decision. We have all experienced these crossroads. We know that had we chosen to go the other path, our lives would be totally different. We decide to go one direction. But what happens to the energy that we have sent into the other decision that was not chosen? It also becomes a reality. Another universe or dimension is instantly created to act out the other decision. And another you is also created to be the player in that scenario. This was the simple explanation, because it does not only happen when we are faced by major decisions. It can happen each and every time we are faced with choices, no matter how big or small. Each time we make a decision, another universe or dimension is instantly created so the other choice can also become a reality, and another you splits off to play that part. They are all just as real as the present life we are focused on. We are not aware of these other parts of us, and it is wise that we are not. Our human minds would never be able to handle it all. I was told that the problem is not with the brain, it is with the mind. There are simply no concepts within our human mind to allow us to comprehend all the complexities of it. That is why we will never be allowed to have all the answers. There is no way we could understand. So they, in their wisdom, choose what small pieces to give us during this time of awakening, so we will have some expanded information. As our minds expand to encompass new ideas and theories, they will give us some more small morsels. I personally am grateful for the bits and pieces I am being given. It shows that our minds are awakening. This is the only way we are going to be able to handle the concept of our Earth changing frequency and vibration in order to shift into a different dimension. The information I am receiving now I could never even begun to understand when I started my work thirty years ago. So I know I have grown, and I can see this reflected in the books I have written over these years. The revelation that came to me during the lecture in Chicago was that perhaps the reason the people on each earth will not be aware of each other, and what is happening, might be that it will be similar to the concept of the creation of parallel universes and dimensions, only on a much grander scale. If we are not aware of these other parts of ourselves acting out the decisions we have created by the energy we have focused on them, then the people on the two Earths would be unaware of each other. One Earth would be going in the direction of one decision or choice, and the other Earth would be going in another direction, each acting out an alternate decision. It is up to the people on Earth at the present time to each make their personal decision of which path they want to follow. The energy is present and becoming stronger. It is physically affecting our bodies. Our own frequency and vibration is being altered. But I believe it is still up to us what we decide, which earth we gravitate toward, because of our free will. The main difference here is that they said this has never happened on such a grand scale before. Never in the history of the universe has an entire planet changed its frequency and vibration to shift into another dimension. That is why it is said to be the greatest show in the universe, and everyone from many different galaxies and dimensions are watching to see what is going to happen. So there you go. That's the first section, part one, to allow for discussions now. So we've listed some questions that we are going to address here. And the one of the things there, the, the first question was, how could there be an Earth split between the third and the fifth dimension? How could that happen? And this principle of parallel universes is, is, is a very bizarre one. This is something that Dolores explains herself, is that when she first started doing past life regressions, she built up a picture around that. Then it started expanding into the afterlife and what that is all about. And then it's, and so all these things were in, incremental bite-sized chunks that helped her to get where she want. Now, the only challenge with where we are going directly into this new earth kind of scenario is that we are taking you way down into the rabbit hole, right? Rather than starting at the beginning and working our way forward. Now, if you've been doing the work anyway, you'll get it. You'll understand. But nevertheless, this is kind of something that you can explore for yourself. And the main thing is to trigger people into be discerning 
about truth, discerning about what they accept as reality, but also to be curious. Now, this whole principle of the parallel universes, it kind of goes back to almost like the sliding doors movie with Gwyneth Paltrow type of idea. And I know it's not exactly the same because it wasn't just a decision. If one, she got slightly delayed by a half a second and the other one, she didn't get delayed. And But they took her on completely different paths through life and you saw them side by side. Now, this is something where, you know, the principle is that every time you have a, a decision to make, you put energy into how you're going to decide to go, whether you're going to go left, whether you're going to go right. I mean, let's face it, we get plenty of those decisions in life which take us on a completely different tangent. And you know that life will be different on the basis of that decision. And it's interesting to know that whichever decision you do take is fine because you are on that path. That is why I'm here now. That's why you are where you are. Nevertheless, all these decisions get played out in this parallel universe. And yet you don't see it. And it's kind of like this bizarre kind of idea that on an earth split between the third and the fifth dimension, that this would be like, okay, you have elevated your frequencies on that emotional spiral up to that ascending level where you've got the unconditional love, you've got integrity, you've got forgiveness, you've got empathy, and you've broken away from the cycles of fear and all those associated type of emotions with hatred and all the rest of it that you know, that kind of drag you down into the density. So that is kind of like, at some point, this is the theory, it splits. And if you are ready for the fifth dimensional earth, you follow that on that particular parallel universe. Meanwhile, there's a third dimension version that goes off with those who are not yet ready for that ascension. And again, I said it before, there's no sort of judgment required on that because you are where you're supposed to be. We all get to where we're supposed to go in the end. It's just uh, different routes for everybody. So that is how we could be unaware of the people within each split, be unaware of each other. And also, as I say, that, that idea, the importance of having bite-sized chunks to aid digestion about this, you know, bringing forth wisdom about what this is really about. Because when we have our westernized programming and conditioning, we're given a very narrow version of reality, which encourages us to rely on safety and not question authority. But, you know, maybe times are changing. So that's kind of what I wanted to say on that specifically. So, Jolay, what would you uh, care to add? Well, just to dovetail into what you said about, you know, hey, maybe we need to expand our mind a little bit. You know, it is true because knowledge is power. And when we talk about some of these concepts, for those of you that may say, well, I'm, I believe in this or I believe in that, we're just asking you to open up and expand your mind because there are these different pathways you can take in order to develop that spiritual connection to yourself and others, because what it's about and what we're here to do is really help people let go of that fear and really bring in um, whatever it, they need to bring in in order to elevate. And it just means getting more neutral is a great step towards that. Yes, uh, totally agree with that. Yeah, it's, it's been able to view the dramas going on in the world through the lens of neutrality, I think, gives is quite a powerful thing, realizing that there is a, a bigger agenda behind everything. So let's carry on. Section two, here we go. An earlier shift. I have been receiving a great deal of information about the coming shift. Much of this has already been written about in book two of this series. And yet the information continues to come. This is our destiny, our future. In this session, I was given another missing part of the story. This has happened on Earth before. Groups of people in the past have been able to shift en masse into another dimension. These are usually groups that are surrounded in mystery because they simply disappeared, leaving no clues as to what happened to their civilizations. There has been much speculation and various theories have been brought forward by the so-called experts, but few have considered the fact that they simply walked off this earth and entered a different dimension, leaving no trace behind. The Mayans are a prime example, also some North American Indian tribes. I had been told through my work that these groups had become very advanced in their development and had chosen to change vibrations and shift in mass. 
I was told this was one of the most logical explanations for the Mayan calendar stopping at the year 2012. If they, in their advanced state, had been able to accomplish this, they were able to see that in the future the entire planet would follow and accomplish the same feat. This would be an even greater event than what they had accomplished, so they marked it on their calendars as the time the entire planet and everything on it changed frequency and moved into the other dimension taking every living thing with it. I had been told these things, and it sounded reasonable to me. However, I was not expecting to have a regression where someone went back to a lifetime when they actually experienced such an event. This woman was able to report something that we can only speculate about at this time. It was another piece of the puzzle given by a voice from the past. They were making sure I was given all the pieces, my job was to organize them and put them together into a coherent story. After experiencing death from an accident in Roman times, Suzanne looked down and saw the road she had been walking on as a spiral. It seems to be the road, but it's also symbolic. Almost like these shells that they cut in half. That's a good example of it. Break number two. This is just a relatively brief one, uh, but I do just quickly say that the, the Mayans are the Native American example of civilizations that simply disappeared. Certain certain Native American tribes, obviously, there was just very occasionally complete settlements were empty and there were no explanation behind it, much like with the Mayans. So I find that really interesting. And, and this really does give you a little bit more backdrop to that. But the main reason for this particular break was just to accelerate this a little because there's about five minutes or so of the explanation about the afterlife from, from this lady when this lady had died during Roman times and going up into the ether and experiencing life on the other side. But that's not our focus for today. So we're kind of cutting ahead with that. We go back to her, Suzanne, as a 30-year-old man in this civilization where they were doing a cross-dimensional shift. So that is our real interest in that. So the NDE, you know, the near-death experience or the death experience in this particular case tend to show an incredible expansion of awareness where everything becomes clear and that we are part of everything. And we've seen that before with Gary Wimmer, for instance, when he was uh, on the show with us. And he's up to about 2 million views on his near-death experience as well now. So well done, Gary. That's a great message out to the world right there. Anyway, in this particular case, this lady who is now in the life of a 30-ish year old man, she goes to a mountain, identifies it as a Native American place, but she knows it is not of the earth as we know it. It is beyond the third dimensional feeling. It may be, as she thought of an astral or etheric plane, possibly the fifth dimension. And, oh, and she felt it was an overlay of the third dimensional earth. She knows it as home and she knows it to be deeply spiritual. And she realizes they were once of the 3D earth, but moved off somehow. And they had raised their frequencies as a group. So that is where we rejoin the proceedings here. So if you moved off the earth, then you took this physical place with you. It seems like what might have happened was the band of people. I say banned because it's not like there are many, many people around. And somehow we've reached a point of changing frequencies, as if we all went on a similar experience, when people do things as a group. But it was like that whole society was able to transcend. Was this an intentional thing? Yes. Was it something that was talked about? Talked about and worked for. People aspired to this. So not everyone did this, just a certain group of your people? It was all the known people then. We were an Indian tribe, and we knew there were other tribes around, but they weren't part of our world, Earth Society. We were just by ourselves. We only cared about what happened to us. How were you able to do this? Were you taught? There were teachers for some generations, the wise people, and we were taught with meditation. It was all of us. Maybe we're only a few hundred people, but that was our whole world. I think we experienced it before we moved in. We would go and come, individually and in groups. The frequency was raised and we experienced that and shifted back. 
So this one I find really interesting because, again, it, this is about raising the frequencies from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. And this is kind of what they did. It was a Native American tribe, but it was the, the meditational aspect of that, which was clearly very important. And she does go into this in more depth in the next section. But really, with this one, I want to hand it over to Jolay because this is Jolay's world. We, we rely on Jolay for our guided meditations, visualizations. So what do you think, Jolay? Um, yes, I, I believe there is a certain skill set or way that you can go about raising your frequency and vibration. And it's such an honor and a blessing to be able to teach that. But you really don't need me to help you do that. And to remember who you are just requires some, some quiet time and connection with nature, with a breathing as well as visualizing where you want to go. And once you start incorporating all of those things together on a regular basis, the universe begins to conspire to really help you to grow spiritually and connect. It's a truly beautiful thing. And no matter what your belief system may be, the possibilities are there for you to bring in the knowledge, the wisdom, and the information that you need to grow and to separate from you know, I can't wait until John has this um, astro butterfly that he's going to deal with next week. And I'm sorry, I hope I'm not ruining it, but it's just so inspiring um, how this, per this, she's breaks this down and we look forward. I look forward to that, John, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, uh, and uh, great gratitude to Louise Hatch uh, amongst our community for raising that with me as well to, to share that because that is deep wisdom. That is deep wisdom. Yes. And, and and for us to be able to tap into that and to expand on it and, and break it down as to, to what it means for us, I think is really, I think it's fantastic. Absolutely. Because it is, sometimes it seems so elusive, but there's actually steps that you can take that'll get you there. And that's so beautiful. And a lot of our religious literature is helping us with that. But sometimes the semantics or the details, once you get into those, they really can help you elevate. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, and it's interesting, like you said, you, what you do for us is fantastic. So I love the guided visualizations. You help us to, to, to kind of get to that deeper place. But yeah. to your point, I know that with practice, you can get there yourself right absolutely and absolutely the more you practice it the easier it becomes it almost gets to a point where you're just like flicking the switch and saying right connected which is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. <laughs> okay all right well we'll carry on to the next section how did they know this would happen i was just wondering about that it's like the people just knew I don't know if at one time someone might have told them. I'm sensing now that maybe we were not from the Earth altogether, but we came to Earth, establishing a colony. But we knew mentally we could transport ourselves and move. In the 3D world, were you a spiritual group? Very much. We had great respect for the Earth and the forces within it. Maybe that's what made it easier for you to move to the other dimension? Perhaps. Certainly the knowledge. But I also want to say that people are smarter than they think. Everyone knows how to do this. They may not know they do. Do you have to eat there? Do you have to consume anything? We do eat, but it seems like the food is lighter, more vibrational. It lasts longer in us, for us. The requirements aren't so great. And you don't want to go back to the Earth? We have moved on. It seems the next step of the evolution of us. I moved him forward to see if anything happened there that was important. It seemed like such an idyllic place. What could he find that would be significant? I see that we're being asked to come back. And I have tears now. We're being asked to come back to the Earth. The whole group? Some of us. We know some things that would be of help to the people. And we have great compassion for the people. But you don't want to go. Yes and no. It's like taking that first trip for the exploration. Yes, you want to go, but you're torn. It's sad to leave home. We are people who are very loving, very compassionate, and we wish to share this with others. 
But this place is not like a spirit side, is it? Not totally. It seems to be another physical, but less dense, existence. Not totally spirit, I don't think. It's not like the spirit place where you go when you die and leave the body. I don't know. We seem to be pretty eternal. We moved off the physical where we might have died to some place or frequency where it's not necessary to die. I think we actually pulled it off. I think we took the physical bodies that changed and we took it with us. You said it changed the molecular structure. Yes, totally, yes. This was an experiment of sorts. It was the melding of a group mind from the 3D. It was the forerunner of where we can go now, I see. So it was a group that experimented at first. Yes. I think there were others trying different ways. This was our way. So someone is telling you you have to come back? It's like there's a call, there's a need. It's like things have gotten much worse on the Earth since we left, since we moved off. You have done it so you know how to experience it. Yes. Oh, there's great advantage to having heavy earth experience. So what do you want to do? Oh, definitely go. I think I can be helpful there, yes. How are you going to do this? It's coming in as a baby somehow. That means starting all over again, doesn't it? Yes, well, almost. But it's important. Do you think the same thing is going to happen to the earth again? Same thing being? You said you were here to show them how. Things are in sad shape in some ways here. People have forgotten or didn't learn basic stuff. I think it's more that they need to learn about love and forgiveness. It doesn't matter what dimension you're in. The lesson always seems to be the same, that we are love and sourced by the one creator. People get caught up in survival at so many levels. But when you come back as a baby, are you going to remember what you're supposed to do? It feels like there are programs that will go off. Yes, we forget, but there are somehow programs that can be activated. It seems like it's a time-release thing. Some of it is triggered by associations with people or events. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, severe storms. I feel that all through my body. There's some call that happens. So when these earthly things happen, they trigger the program that is in the humans. Yes. The ones who have come in for this mission. Yes, who have that program. Participating in ceremonies from antiquity are also big triggers. Okay. So next discussion points, right? So there's a lot of things uh, within that section that I really just wanted to touch on. One of the things he was talking about that when they were on the 3D Earth in their 3D capacity, they had a great respect for the Earth. They kind of understood that Mother Earth was this living being. And it's interesting, actually, because this stuff that we got on the video that we're showing you now, where the Earth is a satellite hurtling through space, and you think, well, we feel like we're on fixed surroundings. Well, we're not. We are traveling at great speed through space on this planet, this little planet. And it's amazing when you kind of think of it in that way. But this is something, again, that Jolay mentioned when she was talking about meditating, is this idea of grounding. You know, having great respect for the Earth is important and understanding that Mother Earth can help us because we're part of Mother Earth. Our physical bodies came from the Earth and they will ultimately go back to the Earth. So that was one point I wanted to make. And then once you go up into the higher dimension, she said, it is no longer necessary to die. There is a change of the molecular structure, the frequency. It is lighter. Okay, so, and this is something that I have read about quite a bit, is that once you go to the higher dimensions, your body literally becomes lighter. So you will travel with your body. But what you could find is that after a while, you realize you do not need your physical body. I mean, we've touched on this many times before, saying, you know, we get this idea that we are our physical body but we're not our physical body. It's part of it, mind, body, and spirit. Okay, so it's part of who we are on the earth. But nevertheless, we are not our physical body. That's just 50 trillion cells of miracles all working together in this case to create Team John Drew. But for me to believe I am only my body is like driving your car and believing you are the car. This is just the vehicle for this particular lifetime. So that is something that once you get to that higher molecular structure, 
the body gets lighter, it can last as long as you want it to last. And, I, and from what I understand, once you're in this higher dimensional energy, you can choose to shift form because we never die. OK, so energy, we are all made of energy. Energy can never die. So all that happens is that when you die in the physical, your energy transmutes, your life force energy transmutes from the physical body into the non-physical, which is where our past relatives have gone to. And that's where they are. They're still very alive and they are no longer held back by the constraints of a physical body. But as we go up the dimensions, our bodies get lighter, our ability to, to, to travel, to do things. You don't even have to eat as much. You just like, it's a different kind of consumption. It's very interesting when it comes down to that. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing I would say is, is about the fact is, I think that this were, these were forerunners for something to, to lay out a path for our future. And I believe there are a lot of beings on the planet right now who have come, have incarnated on the planet in this case, coming in as a baby, but the veil of forgetfulness will drop. So as a veil of forgetfulness drops, then you don't remember what it is that you're here to do. So then you have a program, a trigger. So in this case, what she talks about is like the earth events, the weather patterns, the volcanic eruptions and things like that. And what's really interesting about that is that, of course, that's something we've talked a lot about in the last few weeks about the coming changes, 2024 and beyond we are likely to see earth changes. We are likely to see extreme weather patterns. And I think we're already starting to evidence some of it all the time now. But I think it's this is just the, the, the thin end of the wedge. I think this will grow and it will expand outwards. But it's things like that that trigger people, or it can be a person, the chance meeting of a certain person, which isn't a chance meeting at all, and it triggers something. And I know from my own personal experience, I go back to 2018, and I had a reading with Susan Graw, over in California, I never would have gone for a reading had my daughter not gone for a reading and I got all sorts of messages coming through that I had to explore. I was a total left brainer. I never believed any believed any of this old nonsense, right? And if it hadn't have been for that trigger point, I wouldn't be on this journey. But I think that trigger point was always meant to happen in the same way that she talks about these earth events being triggers for these people who have come in on this higher spiritual kind of plane where they have more of a, a, a higher vibrational frequency, which entrains others around them to that higher vibrational frequency. And it helps us all to elevate. And one of the examples of that was Sheila Seppi, who was a walk-in. I interviewed her about probably a year and a half ago now. It was a fascinating interview. She's written a brilliant book. A walk-in is where a soul aspect changes place with the soul of a living person. It's all done with permission. The, this was the soul of a lady who wanted to leave age 30, who was in very poor medical health, wanted to get back over to the other side. Sheila used the specific word. They heard the call from where she was. They heard the call. And she was answering that call by becoming ensouled within that body. And she has several healing clinics in Colorado now. And she is imprinting that high frequency energy on so many people. And that is one of the examples. And that's only one of them. There are hybrid beings, there are star seeds, and so many types out there, all here to raise the frequency of the energy on the planet and to help us all to ascend. Yeah, and that final point there, ritual ceremonies and rituals can be triggers. And I find that really interesting because I do take a look at the wisdom of the ancients, the indigenous tribes and all the rest of it. And, and it's interesting because from a westernized point of view, we look at these practices and some would look down the nose at it and say, it's, you know, this is this is primitive. Whereas in reality, we got that completely the wrong way round. I know it goes back to ancient times, but I think there's a lot of ancient wisdom that has been lost. Anyway, at that point, I am going to be quiet because I'm going to bring Jolay in. What do you think, Jolay? I think that, you know, really relying on the knowledge of nature, you know, because I've been talking about that. It's really about opening your mind and letting things in. The more that we learn and grow, and not only from what's externally coming, but really listening to our own internal guidance and wisdom, because that's really how the frequency becomes raised. Getting curious you know, um, if you take an example of going out in mother nature, you have a problem, you have an issue, 
um, you need to, to find a solution to. And you go and you sit on the ground or you allow the wind to blow on your face. And then all of a sudden you get this epiphany. These things are real. And when you talk about, John, about the different walk-ins and the different people and the, the bloodlines and the blood types are the science behind some of this being real that people can look for as concrete science behind some of these concepts. So the blood, so the breadcrumbs are there for you to realize that, hey, there's more to it than just this box that I'm in. There's more to it, you know? And we just kind of want to help you open up to understand that the power and the wisdom to up level, to heal, to grow resides within you. And once you connect the dots within you, what happens, you start to connect with outside of yourself as well, but it is an inside job. Oh, totally. I love that. It is an inside job. Absolutely. And I'll pause here for a moment as well, just to share Janet's comments because Janet is with us. So hi, Janet, thank you for being with us. Really appreciate your, uh, your presence as always. And Janet said, it is wonderful that each decision we take brings us nearer to the real path. Everything that is happening in the world we can see through this now and feel lighter without the fear. Brilliant. Love it. And then another comment she has made. I know we are made of stardust, but it's proportions is protons, pure light. We need to become a lighthouse to guide others on the path of joy, of love and love. Yeah, Janet, you always nail it. I love your comments and I'm totally with you because that's one of the things you talk about the protons and pure light. One of the things that Sheila Seppi, who was that walk in that I interviewed, she said that when she got the call, she was on a spaceship in a higher dimension outside of Earth, firing photonic light energy into the planet to help raise the frequency of the planet. So I know we're talking about some pretty out there kind of things here right now. But what you're talking about, Janet, makes total sense. And uh, it, it kind of aligns with that interview of, of, of some time ago now. But it's still as valuable now as it ever was. So I need to put that out again at some point because uh, Sheila is really a, a, just a, a wonderful person. So thank you for the comments, Janet. We are going to mo move to the last section, which is only one, uh, less than two minutes long here. But this is where Dolores brings in the subconscious aspect of, was it Suzanne? I think we started out with there that uh, obviously has gone back to this past life. And this is an interesting aspect. So here we go. I decided it was time to call in the subconscious to answer the questions and explain things more fully. She had the feeling this group came from somewhere off of the planet. Do you know anything about that? Yes, they came from the source. Directly? Yes. As a group? It's not really a group. It's a mind trying to have experiences, so it's splintered. It's the same soul. And it's okay. The joke is, we are all one. Why do they want to live on Earth? Earth is pretty special. There is much that can be learned. But then they decided to shift frequencies. By coming and taking on the physical and being forerunners. It's very important to create a mold, to create a track. People can entrain to what has happened. You make it easier for others if you've made the path. So it's always been known there would be a time for the need for ascension of sorts, of shift, of transformation, of transcendence. Did something happen that they wanted to leave and try this experiment? They were exploring how to change dimensions and forms. They were exploring how to be genuinely 3D, physical, and then to take that body and make a shift. And take the body with you? In this case, to take the body with you, and that was what was done. That was why it was an experiment. Yes, and that template is here. That knowledge is available. There's a few interesting aspects there. This tribe of people were here to create the path that would enable others to follow. So the path exists to go from the third dimension to the fifth dimension because others have done it. This was a Native American example. You know, there's also plenty of stuff within Dolores' books which actually talk about the Mayans as well 
uh, with specific examples there of how they too transcend it from third dimension to fifth dimension, which is why, to all intents and purposes, it left mankind puzzled as to what had actually happened to them. They just left behind the magnificent ruins, <laughs> but they were nowhere to be seen or found. So entraining to the path. And the other point that I found really interesting there, Joel, is when they talk about we are all a soul aspect that's embodied into the physical, but the actual soul itself could have a thousand, maybe more. I don't know what the number is because it depends, right? But a, a different sort of lifetimes going on. And it's not all human. It could be different energetic types. It doesn't have to be, it, it could be so many different things. And every, when you bear in mind that everything is energy, everything is experience. So it could be extraterrestrial. It could be human. It could be an animal form, but the soul is just experiencing all different aspects. As he says, it's not really a group. It's the mind that splinters into all these different aspects of, uh, of, of embodied soul. The mind splinters. And he said, the joke is, we are all one, right? Mm -hmm. And that, I love that because that takes us back to the first universal law, which is the law of oneness that says everything is connected. We are all part of each other, which is why we don't want to hate on each other, you know, because we're hating ourselves when we do that. So, Jolay, what do you think? I think that's absolutely right. And but there is a way to utilize the dark to inform the light. You know, those two, the dualities that we may possess, we want to, I guess, part of the journey is to merge those two internally and externally. And you are correct, but we know that through fear and through programming at times we glitch out and we hate on ourselves <laughs> and we right. hate on others. But at the same time, as the video went into in detail, forgiveness and love and joy are what transformation is really all about. And you have to ask yourself at times, or I do, we know that love can be tough, right? Love can be true, this and that. You can always put another adjective with the love. But when you reach a state of joy, the love is already there. So that's part of the journey as well, is to move into the joy of this experience. And through that, uh, the frequency and the vibration automatically um, raises itself because I had um, a friend send me this video of a Bob Newhart, right? Okay. And I guess, I don't know if you've ever seen this clip, but this lady sitting in, in his office complaining and she goes, oh, you know, I feel so bad about myself. And, this, and, and he goes, well, just stop. Well, this is the, you know, I feel this and this. Well, just stop. And so sometimes it can be just <laughs> as easy as you telling yourself, you know what? This is unacceptable. Let's just stop. And let's and let's cease going into the dark hole of that anxiety and that fear and go, you know what? I get off this this negative train ride right here. And let's make it easy on ourselves. That's what this whole new earth is about. Is not even believing in the struggle. <laughs> right. You know, and this process for me has really Lately, a lot of emotions been moving through me in these lives. And this is that journey. And I'm going with it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And for you out there, accept where you are right now, because that's how you begin to move forward and elevate. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I do love that. And, you know, everybody has a choice. And what I would also say, as we always say, is that we honor the fact that not everybody will agree with this. Not everybody will want to see life in this way. And that is perfectly fine because our diversity exists for a reason. We're all supposed to be different. All we do is plant the seeds. And if it's not your thing, then that is perfectly fine. No judgment required. You are on your path and uh, it is always honored. So very briefly, I'm just going to go down before we go to the guided meditation, just finish off these questions, because this is during the Sunday live, we would answer the following questions. So the question, the next question that came down following what we've already responded to, has anything like this ever happened before, which is when we went into this Native American group who did transcend from the third to the fifth dimension. So we know, yes, it has happened before. How can we raise our energetic vibration? And what would be the reason? Well, 
to make the journey to the fifth dimension would be a very good reason. But how do we do it? Well, yeah, meditation was something that was talked about. The spirituality side of things, the going within and understanding that we are all one and that we can raise our vibration. And why would we do it? Well, because once you're into those elevated emotions, if you're living life in joy, in celebration of life, in love and all the rest of it, who wouldn't choose that? over fear, anger, hatred, and all the rest of it, okay? So, I mean, you look at that as a very obvious question. We don't want to live in fear. We want to live fearlessly. We want to celebrate life. This is where we're heading. This is what the fifth dimensional energy is all about. So what would happen to our physical bodies in a higher dimension? We've answered that because we know they would get lighter. I think the foods and everything else like that would be lighter, uh, what is the principle of time release triggers to wisdom? Well, as she mentioned, it could be those time release could be the events that take place in the world. It could be a chance meeting with a person, which isn't a chance meeting at all. These things can all be triggers. And I know that this is a very much part of the world we live in. Fantastical though it sounds. So, and then the final question is, isn't this all just deluded nonsense or just maybe the truth? Well, that is for each of you to decide for yourselves. I know which side I go with that. I always go with truth. I think what we put out there, hand on heart, I mean it. It's my reality. Now, you may look and say, well, you know, maybe you're a bit deluded. And that's fine. But it's kind of that's that's where I am with this. And, you know, Jolie, what do you think? I think that is correct. You know, let your heart and your your intuition be your guide. If it resonates with you, then it's something that you want to bring in. And even sometimes if you contract and reject, you might want to take a minute and let that energy settle and let the mind begin to unpack that because there may be something there that triggered you that you need to take a look at because this whole process is us getting out of denial as to what is real in our reality. Maybe we can see beyond just what's in front of our face. Right. And yeah. we can start putting those glasses on that allow us to see things not only deeper, but maybe the parallel lives that they're talking about. You know, we think of it up and down, heaven and hell. But what about the re the reverberations in the pond? Maybe that has some information, wisdom and knowledge for us to expand into. Yes. So it's exciting. It is. It is. One final comment from Janet here before we go into guided meditation. Janet says, nature is important. When I feel fear, I go to the forest, lean against an old tree and take my shoes off and dig my hands and feet into the ground. It's the best medicine for fear when you glitch. Yeah. Right? That's correct. <laughs> that is a Long great, way. you see that? She just gave us the tool and a little piece of a skill set to get to where we want to go. I love it. I love it. So, Jolie, the meditation for today. We are ready. Let's do this. Okay. I'm going to switch screens and we are going to go to our copper wire spiral with 432 hertz backing. So, as always, please put your feet flat on the floor for those of you laying down. Bend your knees and put your feet flat for the beginning part of the meditation. And we want to go ahead and connect between our sit bones and ground our energy, creating, visualizing, or imagining a beautiful beam of light, tunnel of water, or earth element, creating this grounding cord that is connected to our the base of our spine, six inches in diameter, as it moves through what we're sitting in and down through Mother Earth into her core and growing roots. And she in kind begins to wrap her loving, joyful energy around as a copper type of wire to conduct her love and nurturing energy. What we're going to do is we're going to recycle any negativity, any doubt, any fear, sending that down through our portal, the grounding cord into Mother Earth as she recycles and transmutes it into positive life force energy, sending our own energy back to us in that alternating current vibe, and the rest turns into positive creative life force energy. 
for anyone to use. So as you bring your awareness to your chest, breathe with the rhythm of your body, let Mother Earth and your grounding cord do what it does. Take a deep breath in, exhale, and call your higher self above you. Snap in your astral body and just listen to my voice and allow for these things that are a part of your soul architecture to begin to enter and relax into your body. The astral body, your feet, its feet in your feet, knees in your knees, hips in your hips, head in your head, hands in your hands, shoulders in your shoulders fitting in you like a hand fits inside of a glove, calling all of your energy back. As you, if from your chest cavity and the heart-centered space of love, begin to let go of the past, any darkness, any parts of you that you fail to want to grandfather in or that you may deny, bringing all of that into your heart from a place of love and allowing for you to sit in the energy of your divine power and allowing for any darkness to be transmuted and transformed into light so that you can begin to separate from the judgment and the criticism and become curious not only about the environment around you, but to go deeper into yourself as the love expands out from your heart by turning all of those blood cells heart-shaped and sending them out throughout the body and your system. As you allow for your heart to do its thing, I want you to bring your awareness to the center of your head and as we get into that mind, letting go of anything that no longer serves us, any genetic programming, ancestral programming, or disease and illness we may be carrying in our DNA, let's command the energy of the universe to help us reprogram this into optimal health and well being creating a new blueprint, one that has us going downstream, leaving the struggle behind, going towards the love and our divine power. So take a moment and hold the space for others. And while you are programming, reprogramming yourself for that of grace and ease, of an elevated high, higher vibration, whatever that may be, bring, bringing that energy, that remembering in. And letting go of the past, ask the creator of all that is, the energy of the universe to wipe your slate clean, whatever is in the way, of the highest and best for you and those around you that's in you. Ask for the creator to, with grace and ease, go ahead and send that down the portal into Mother Earth. So I want you to see that from the center of your head, open up a trap door at the bottom and allow for all of the detritus, the spiritual, the emotional, the negative thoughts, the limiting beliefs, to go down that channel, that, that trap door you created in the center of your head, and for all of that to go down and that get sucked down that grounding cord into Mother Earth, and watch her turn it into positive creative life force energy and send it back up, that alternating current back into your body as that stardust. As that moves throughout your body, and begins to dance and integrate with those beautiful blood cells that are heart-shaped. And that moves out into all the organs, the bones, the ligaments, all of the physicality of your body. And then out into the intangible essence of your aura layer. 
and you really being sculpted as this beautiful, perfect circle of divine energy, life force, so that you light up every room you go into. When you walk past plants, they grow. <laughs> and when you walk past people, they feel positive energy. Let go of any unforgiveness, any grudges, any energy that no longer serves you, sending it down that portal and allowing for Mother Earth to send it back to you as positive creative life force energy stardust, mixing in with the beauty and the joy that is you. Take a deep breath in, exhale, bring your awareness back into your heart, sitting in a place of love and joy, and know that that divine blueprint that you created in the center of your head is now a part of all of your DNA. And anything that may have been faulty has been resolved and dissolved and transmuted into positive creative life force energy. As you take a deep breath in, exhale, and open your eyes. Beautiful. I love that. I love that imagery of us uh, walking past plants and feeling <laughs> that this energy that enables yes. us to grow, right? And the same with people, right? Being that mm -hmm. beacon. And again, you know, the, the stardust thing that Janet mentioned as well, it's, it's beautiful. No. Yes, absolutely. Because if you can see it, you can be it. But the lighthouse analogy always applies. And I know I've seen lighthouses that have, I don't know, maybe not, but maybe our lighthouse should have light coming out of all four angles, you know, and, and that way we can light the way north, south, east, and west for all of those who are of like mind and right. of like spirit. Absolutely. Thank you. So with that, we will bring things to a close just to say the newsletter will go out tomorrow with the uh, recording from today's live. Thank you to all who have been here in attendance. And uh, Janet says, thank you. Jole, thank you so much. It was beautiful. She's a big thank fan you, of your Janet. meditations. Great. So, thank you, Janet. And also from Veronica Seaman. She says, oh, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie says, powerful meditation, <laughs> Jole. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Yeah. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you for being part of this community as well. So thank you to everybody. Thanks again, Jole. That was beautiful. Absolutely. And thank you again to our community. If you ever have any questions, John Drew at elevatedplanet.life. I'm happy to field those inquiries. And also through our elevatedplanet.life website, you we have a contact page there. And if anybody wants to ever join our distribution list, that is where to come either John Drew at elevatedplanet.life or to our elevatedplanet.life website, where again, this recording and the newsletter will also be. So there you go. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Thank you again for being here today. Thank you, Joe Lay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>